Let's look at some derivatives with natural logs. So number seven, if you look right here, we have the natural log of z. Notice z is our variable. So we have the natural log of our variable. If we are trying to take the derivative of a natural log, the way this works is the natural log of something. So we're going to call it some function g of x. In this case, it's just z, but the natural log of whatever, whatever it is. The derivative of that is the derivative of whatever you have. So in this case, whatever the derivative of g of x is over whatever you started with. So in this case, g of x. So how does this look? Let's see if we can figure this out with number seven. So nine right here, this nine is a constant. So when we go to find g prime of z, our variable is z this time, nine is a constant. It can just hang out in the front and that's okay. We'll take the derivative with respect of everything else around it. Now let's look at this for a second. We have the natural log of z. So if we have the natural log of z and z is our variable, our derivative formula says that we take the derivative of whatever you have the natural log of, in our case, z. So the derivative of z is one over whatever you had the natural log of. Well, in our case, we had the natural log of z. So the derivative of the natural log of z is going to look like one over z. So if we put that in here, we'll have nine for the derivative from here times one over z. The derivative of 12z is 12, and 8 is a constant. 8.1 is a constant. So the derivative of 8.1 is 0. We can clean this up a little bit. We have g prime of z equals 9 over z, and then plus 12. And that's finished. We'll just leave it right there. Let's try again. So this one, we have the natural log of x. So if we want to take the derivative of the natural log of x, that's going to look like the derivative of x, the derivative of whatever you have the natural log of. So the derivative of x, which is just one, over whatever you started with, which in this case is x. So now the problem becomes, well, we have this whole thing raised to the fifth. So if we just had y equals x to the fifth, we would bring down our power and we would subtract one. And we're going to do exactly the same thing here. The only catch is we have what's a little bit of our chain rule. We have our chain rule that we need to tack on. So this is going to look like, let me move this out of the way. Here we go. Five, write your parentheses to the fourth. But instead of it just being x, we have the natural log of x. So that means that we need to use our chain rule and figure out what the derivative of the natural log of x is. We figured that out up here, it's one over x. So this will look like y prime equals five natural log of x raised to the fourth all over x. Let's try number nine. Number nine, we have a square root. I prefer to rewrite it. I don't like to have the square root sign, so I prefer to rewrite this as ln x to the one fifth. Then f prime of x, our derivative, bring down your power, rewrite what you had for your parentheses, and when we subtract one, well, if I have one fifth and I subtract one, that's really one fifth minus five fifths, which will be negative four fifths. So this will be negative four fifths. Rewrite what you had, and then you have to consider your chain rule. So our chain rule tells us to take the derivative of the natural log of x, which will be one over x. All right, let's see if we can clean this up a little bit. So f prime of x equals, this is all to a negative exponent. We have the five in the denominator already, and we have an x in the denominator. So this is all going to be one over, the five from right here, the x from right here, and then this whole piece right here is raised, it will be the four fifths when we move it to the bottom. I would rather personally have the fraction as our exponent, but it would not be wrong if you switched it into the square root form so that you had the four and then the fifth root. Either way is fine. Let's try number 10. So this one, we have to be very, very careful. This is just the ln of x right here. It is not 
This is not the ln of x plus 1. See the difference? The x plus 1 is not in parentheses. This is just ln x. So when we go to solve it down, we have to make sure what piece that we are using. So here we would have y prime equals. Well, let's see if we can figure this out. We have our chain rule here. So we need to bring down our 2, subtract our 1, so to the first power, and then rewrite what we have inside. Then we need to do our chain rule. And the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. The derivative of 1 is 0. So that's finished. So then we can say plus. Same thing again. We have our chain rule. So we'll do the 2. We have e to the x plus 1. Bring down the power, subtract 1, so it'll be to the first. And then we have to do our chain rule. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And the derivative of 1 is 0. So it's going to look like this. We can't really clean it up too much. I guess if you wanted to, you could put the 1 over x. You can move that x to the denominator. So this would be 2 times the natural log of x and then plus 1 all over x. Plus, I'm not really seeing too much we can do here. So 2 e to the x times e to the x plus 1. Looks like as good as it's going to get for that one. Number 11, find the first and second derivative. So same idea here. If we have f of x equals the natural log. Now this time it's the natural log of the whole thing. So if we want to find our first derivative, well, the derivative of the natural log is 1 over whatever you had. And then it's times the derivative of whatever you had. So just 2x. So that means our derivative is going to be 2x over x squared minus 5. Right, well, we got that part. That wasn't so bad. But now we need to figure out our second derivative. So if we need to figure out our second derivative, well, we've gotten rid of the natural log, so that helps a little bit. But we need to do our quotient rule. So for our second derivative, it's going to look like the bottom times the derivative of the top, the derivative of 2x is 2, and then the top times the derivative of the bottom, the derivative of x squared minus 5 is 2x, all over the denominator squared. This one's not too bad to try to simplify. Sometimes they get pretty bad to try to simplify, and then I'll argue don't bother. But this one's not so bad. We can distribute this two, and we can multiply the two x's together. And it won't be too bad. It'll clean up OK. So we have 2x squared. Here we would have minus 10. And then here we would have minus 4x squared. And the denominator, we're just going to leave that alone. And this we can clean up one step farther, the 4x squared and the 2x squared. Because it's a negative 4x squared, we can simplify because they have the same exponent and same power. So that'll look like negative 2x squared minus 10 all over x squared minus 5 quantity squared. And that will give us our second derivative. Number 12. So we have a curve with the equation. And you can guess how to pronounce that. It's kind of a neat looking curve though. So it's asking us to see where does it have a horizontal tangent. A horizontal tangent means that if we're looking at our derivative, our derivative will be zero. So we're trying to find an equation of the tangent line and we're trying to see where the curve have a horizontal tangent. So if we're trying to find the equation of the tangent line, then that means we need to take the derivative and then write the equation with our line. So let's start with our derivative here, and then we'll use it for both pieces. So we have y squared equals, and we have x to the third plus 3x squared. So for this one, we need to use our implicit differentiation because we have the y squared. So that's going to be 2y, y prime. And then the derivative of our x to the third will be 3x squared. And then the derivative of 3x squared from right here is 6x. 
So it looks like if we solve it for y prime, y prime is going to equal 3x squared plus 6x all over 2y. There we go. Now we didn't have to rearrange our terms this time because if it had the y prime, it was already on the left and there's no other terms on either side that we need to move. So we're just going to leave them and we just needed to divide by the 2y. Now we're told that x equals 1 and y equals negative 2 and that's from right here. So we can substitute these values in. So that will give us y prime equals 3 times 1 squared plus 6 times 1. And then 2 times negative 2. So y prime will be our slope. And that looks like we'll be able to simplify. So we'll have 3 plus 6 over negative 4. So that'll be 9 and negative four. I don't like to have the negative in the denominator, so I'm going to make it negative nine fourths. So if we want the equation, well, our equation is going to look like y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So our equation is going to look like y minus negative two equals negative nine over four and x minus one. Add the opposite, distribute your negative nine fourths. So y plus two, equals negative 9 over 4x, and then negative times negative gives us positive, so plus 9 over 4. Subtract your 2 from both sides. If I subtract 2 from 9 fourths, that's really like subtracting 8 fourths, so 9 minus 8 will give us 1 fourth. So we have y equals negative 9 over 4x plus 1 fourth. So the last thing that we need to do is see where our curve has a horizontal tangent. So if we want to find a horizontal tangent, then that means that the derivative has to equal zero. So if the derivative has to equal zero, then that's going to tell us that 3x squared plus 6x all over 2y has to equal zero. Having 2y equals 0 would give us division by 0. Division by 0 is undefined. So let's see if we can figure out where 3x plus, excuse me, 3x squared plus 6x equals 0. So to solve this one down, we need to figure out where our numerator is going to be 0. Factor it. So well, that will give us 3x, and then that will give us x plus 2. So then we can say 3x equals 0. We can say x plus 2 equals 0. So that will give us x equaling 0 and x equaling negative 2. So let's go back and look at our picture. We're guessing that we'll have a horizontal tangent when x equals negative 2 and when x equals 0. So let's look. Well, x equals negative 2 is right here. It sure looks to me like we'll have a horizontal tangent right there. And x equals 0 is right here. So it would have a horizontal tangent as it's coming through right there. 